Hello. Yeah, let's have a conversation about uh, the outpouring of the Ruach HaKadosh, water immersion, immersion with the Ruach, and uh, a little bit of uh, how important that is to do both. I think most of us understand water immersion fairly well. That uh, it is uh, symbolizing uh, the true pattern of Yahusha uh, by going under the water. We are putting our, our flesh to rest, the old man to rest, burying the old man, if you will, and uh, then coming back out of the water being reborn um, as uh, from above as a new creature in Mashiach, new creation in Mashiach, and uh, then we walk in the spirit and the truth from there on out through our, uh, our lifetime. Uh, I think we all kind of got a grasp on that, at least most of us do. Um, but the seems like there's a little bit of hesitance in the immersion of the Ruach HaKadosh that people seem to not quite grasp that. If you do not have the Ruach HaKadosh indwelling you, then you need to pray for the gift of the Ruach to be given to you and be immersed with the Ruach. You have to walk in the spirit in the truth. And the only way to be walking in the spirit is with the Ruach HaKadosh indwelling you. That's the only way to do it. Um, there's uh, definitely quite a bit of scripture that we can point to that uh, uh, teaches us or explains to us that we cannot understand the word of truth scriptures unless we have the Ruach HaKadosh in us and opening our minds to the scriptures. Okay, so our minds have to be opened up to understanding scriptures by the Ruach HaKadosh. Um, and with that said, there's uh, some uninformed teachers going around spreading falsehood uh, by saying that unless someone speaks in tongues, okay, this is a speaking in tongues is a is a spiritual gift, all right. And we can, we'll read about that later on. We'll get to that in 1 Corinthians 12. Um, 13 and 14 actually are also very good about spiritual gifts. Um, but uh, they are saying that, the uniformed teachers are saying that if you do not speak in tongues when you receive the Ruach HaKadosh, um, that means you didn't receive it. <laughs> So in other words, the speaking in tongues is evidence that you have been immersed with the Ruach. And if you don't speak in tongues, then you have not been uh, immersed with the Ruach. Okay. Uh, there's some truth to that, and there's some not so good of truth to that. And what I mean is that if... Uh, in scripture, we can read at least three times, and th those who promote that, by the way, generally are referring to uh, three different passages in the book of Acts, and we're going to go over those. But uh, um, if you re if you receive the Ruach HaKadosh and you speak in other tongues, okay, uh, is definitely evidence that you received the Ruach. That part is true. The part that says that everyone that is 
uh, receives the Ruach HaGadish has to speak in tongues. It's evidence that they received the Ruach is the part that I disagree with. And because people who received the Ruach spoke in tongues, some did, and some uh, received other spiritual gifts. Okay, so there's nine spiritual gifts that can be received as we receive the Ruach. The Ruach itself is a gift. Okay. Um, and so uh, one of those is prophecy. So somebody could receive the Ruach and prophesy. You can receive the Ruach and, and uh, you could start magnifying or extolling Yahuwah. You know, I mean, there's all kinds of different uh, signs that accompanies uh, being uh, immersed with the Ruach HaKadosh. And so this is what I want to go over. And uh, what, this is what, what, you know, come and study with me on this lesson about the spirit of being immersed with the water and the spirit. And uh, hopefully we're going to focus mostly on the, on the immersion of the Ruach. Um, and uh, because I think most people have at least uh, a pretty good understanding of the water immersion. Okay. All right, so let's start with Scripture. We always have to go to Scripture because Scripture is really the evidence of everything that we uh, believe. You know, if we believe something and, and if we can back it up in Scripture, especially uh, without cherry-picking verses, in other words, we can substantiate it in context. We can also confirm it by two or three witnesses. Then we're pretty, and then we can rest fairly assured that we are on uh, the path of truth. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with scriptures. And uh, if we go back to John, let's go to Yahukanan 3. And uh, a lot of this information begins there with Yahusha speaking to. A Pharisee called Nicodemus or Nicodem uh, and uh, he was one of the rulers of the Yehudai and um, he came up to Yahusha and we'll pick that up in John 3 verse 2 it says this one came to Yahusha by night so he came to him at night time uh, for some reason, there's a, a lot of people out there running around saying that uh, Yahuwah or Yahusha didn't work at night, didn't do anything at nighttime. Now, I just don't understand where that's coming from because, I, I mean, there's just a ton of them, you know, a, a large list of, of times where not only Yahuwah worked at Leah or nighttime, so did Yahusha, you know, so did Paul, you know, a lot of them, really. This don't make sense. I mean, I don't understand why what they're trying to prove by saying that, other than uh, that Yahuwah has nothing to do with nighttime, and that's not true. He created darkness and nighttime. So anyway, the one who came to Yahusha by Leah and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from Elohim. For no one is able to do these signs you do if Elohim is not with him. So here Yahushua's already, you know, um, exercised people, you know, chased demons out of people, healed people, you know, of sicknesses and diseases and all kinds of stuff he's already done. Yahushua answered and said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is begotten from above, he is unable to see the reign of Yahuwah. So for some reason, uh, Yahuwah, I mean, Yahushua has chosen to drop this bomb on the Pharisee Nicodemus. All right. So there had to be a reason for that. And the reason was because most of the Pharisees back then, um, and even today, really, 
think that the the path or the way that leads to eternal life is through their works in other words through obedience to the law they think can get them into the kingdom uh, the the problem is 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 what they're not and what they weren't understanding is that your obedience to the law okay or um, trying to be subjective to and and obey all the laws of the torah um was going to was what would get you saved so in other words you had to become a jew through circ male adult circumcision or any you know through circumcision uh you would become a Jew and then by obeying all the laws that would is what would get you into the reign of the kingdom okay into eternal life give you eternal life and so what they were failed to realize is that the belief in the works that the Messiah was going to come and do by believing in his works okay is what the justification for them to be forgiven of their sins is and then once they were forgiven of their sins then they would their obedience would come from being um, thankful for salvation already given through belief if that makes any sense okay so here he's dealing with the Pharisee okay so he says you know, just out of the sky blue, basically. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is begotten from above, he is unable to see the reign of Yahuwah. And so Nicodemus, the Pharisee, said to him, How is a man able to be begotten when he is old? Is he able to enter into his mother's womb a second time and be born? So obviously this statement Yahusha made out of the sky blue uh, just went totally over Nicodemus's head. Okay. And Yahushua answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is begotten of water and the Ruach, he is unable to enter into the reign of Yahuwah. So he is saying, with water and the Ruach, two things, man, that has to be done there. To be born from above. That which has been begotten of the flesh is flesh, and that which is, has been begotten of the Ruach is Ruach. So he's separating the flesh and the Ruach, right? He's, he's, cut, he's showing a division there that they're not the same thing. Uh, do not marvel that I said to you, you have to be begotten from above. The Ruach breathes where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it. So the breeze, the Ruach can mean breeze, you know, or wind too. So the wind breathes where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, you know, blowing, you know. But do not know where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who has been begotten of the Ruach. Now he's, when he says Ruach here, now he's talking about Yahushua's spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh. So Ruach can mean breeze or wind, you know, and the spirit of Yahushua or, or, or the Ruach HaKadosh, depending on the context it's used in. See that? So in this little paragraph here, the Ruach is being used in two different ways. Um, Nicodemus answered and said to him, How is it possible for this to take place? So this is still going above his head, right? He's not catching it. Why? Because he's in the mind of the flesh. That's why he's not getting it. Yahushua answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Yisrael and do not know this? Truly, truly, I say to you, 
we speak what we know and witness what we have seen. And you do not receive our witness. If you do not believe when I spoke to you about earthly matters, how are you going to believe when I speak to you about the heavenly matters? Now, who's he talking about here? Yahusha. Who's he talking about? He said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel and do not know this? True, true. I said, Yeah, we speak what we know and witness what we have seen. Who's he talking about? The followers of Yahusha? Or is he speaking about him and his father? And no one has gone up. Oh, if you do not believe when I spoke to you about earthly matters, how are you going to believe when I speak to you about the heavenly matters? So here again, he's making a, a, a division. Earthly matters, the flesh. Flesh is flesh. Begotten of the flesh is flesh. Earthly matters. Heavenly matters, which is begotten of the Ruach is Ruach, or the heavenly matters. He's making the, the division here. Flesh, okay, and earthly matters, and spirit, and heavenly matters. Okay, he's pointing out there's a difference here. That's why there's water and the spirit. You have to be immersed in the water and the spirit. And no one has gone up into the heaven except he who came down from the heaven, the son of Adam. And as Musha lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the son of Adam has to be lifted up. So now he's prophesying. So that whoever is believing in him should not perish, but possess everlasting life. So anyone who believes in his works... Okay, has everlasting life because they're justified by their belief in what he came and did and will do in, in, in his uh, um, blood offering for the sins of the world. And rose himself back up from the dead, right, and ascended, and then sent back to Ruach. So those are all the works of Yahushua that you have to believe in in order to uh, possess everlasting life. You have to believe in him. So whoever is believing in him should not perish, but possess everlasting life. It means you have to believe everything that he came to do. And he came to do a whole lot, really. There's a whole list of things that he came to do. For Elohim so loved the world that he gave his only begotten four sons, so that everyone who believes in him should not perish, but possess everlasting life. And Elohim did not send his son into the world to judge the world, but that the world through him might be delivered at that particular time. Okay, he will judge the world. Okay, he didn't come as uh, the as the blood atonement uh, at this particular time in, in history to judge. Okay, that wasn't what he came to do, but he will come to judge later on all right <clears throat> make no mistake about that okay so let's move on here now we've we've seen that we have to be immersed in the water and the spirit um it's pretty obvious and then john 14 verse 25 says these words i have spoken to you while still with you but the Comforter, the Ruach HaKadosh, who is truth, whom the Father shall send in my name. So he's going to the Ruach HaKadosh is going to come in his name. Isn't that interesting? So what's the name of the Ruach? Yahusha. <laughs> so Yahusha is indwelling spirit, right? And what does Yahusha mean? I am your deliverer. Yah, your deliverer. See, so it's all Yahuwah. He shall teach you all and remind you of all that I said to you. 
Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You heard that I said to you, I am going away, and I am going to come to you. If you did love me, you would have rejoiced that I said, I am going to the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, that when it does take place, you shall believe. I shall no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he possesses nothing at all in me. But in order for the world to know that I love the Father, and that as the Father commanded me, so I am doing, rise up, let us go from here. Now this is a very powerful passage. Here Yahushua again reveals to us that you're going to have to be immersed with the Ruach because he's saying that uh, while he was still with us, uh, the, the Paralita or the Comforter or the Ruach, which is the Ruach HaKadosh, he just he tells you what that is. It's the, the Comforter is the Ruach HaKadosh. He tells you that. Whom the Father shall send in my name, which will be Yahushua's indwelling spirit, he shall teach you all and remind you of all that I said to you. So very interesting. Uh, the Ruach HaKadosh is Yahushua's indwelling spirit. His name is Yahushua, and he's going to be our teacher. He's going to teach us all things spiritually, spiritual matters. He doesn't need to teach us the literal matters. I mean, we should understand the literal matters because we live, we are, we're flesh. We live in this fleshly carbon universe. Uh, of course, some people just don't understand the fleshly matters either, do they? But if someone is, is uh, uh, speaking and uh, pointing things out in a literal type manner, as it is written literally, uh, you can almost bet your bottom dollar they're in the mind of the flesh. They're not going to, no way they're going to understand spiritual matters. There's just no way. You have to be in, immersed with the Ruach uh, in order to do that. So anyways, um, as we go down through here, very interesting when he says that, uh, as he's talking here, you can, you can almost understand uh, or comprehend that he is speaking as his dual from his dual nature standpoint the full full human uh, understanding so he's speaking as a man not as Yahuwah when he's when he when he comes down in here I'm going to the father for my father is greater than I okay so it sounds like a division, doesn't it? But it's not. It's his dual nature. It's his fleshly human nature, which was fully human, speaking. Okay? And Yahuwah allowed him to speak at times. And at times Yahuwah spoke. And at times they both spoke and completed, even, even completing the same sentence. One starting the sentence and the other one finishing it. So you have to be a keen to, to what's going on here. If it's the fully human speaking, or is it Yahuwah speaking, the divine? You've got to be able to discern that in order to understand. But basically, Yahuwah is saying that the Father is greater because the Father is infinite in size. He's everywhere. <coughs> All right? <coughs> uh, so he's, he's infinite in size, time, space, power. Uh, and basically, you know, so Yahushua, speaking as a man here, uh, knew that he couldn't, as a man, as a fleshy human man, couldn't indwell us. Okay? But he knew that he could come back and indwell his people as the comforter or the Ruach HaKadosh. Okay, so he would go back into being the greatness of the Father. Okay, and, and dwell us. 
Ruach HaKadosh. It's always been Yahusha. You know, there's nothing really changed there other than he revealed himself or manifested himself to us in the flesh. So he put on flesh the likeness of man so that we could see him, hear him, speak with him, smell him, touch him, and know that he was real. Okay, because Yahuwah is spirit. See, so he showed himself, revealed himself to us, and actually became our deliverer. Yahuwah is our deliverer. Okay. So, uh, that's what that means. And uh, let's go on to Acts. And here in Acts 1, we, we find out that... Uh, Yahushua is telling them a little bit more about receiving, being immersed in the Ruach. So in Acts 1, verse 4, it says, In meeting with them, this is Yahushua after his uh, ascension. I'm going to back up a little bit here. It says, until the day when he was taken up, Yahushua ascended, and after instructions through the uh, Kodesh Ruach to the emissaries whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them for forty days, speaking concerning the reign of Yahuwah. And meeting with them, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem because to wait for, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which you have heard from me. We just heard that from him, didn't we? Because Yahukanah truly immersed in water, but you shall be immersed in the Ruach HaKadosh, not many days from now. So this is Yahushua appearing to them and telling them this, that they're going to be immersed in the Ruach HaKadosh not many days from now. So again, he is he's definitely uh, separating the water immersion and the spirit immersion to let you know that these there's two different immersions that it has to, trans it has to take place. Water immersion and spiritual immersion. Okay? Uh, but he only spoke of the immersion of Yahukana, which was for uh, remission. You know, cleaning yourself of your sins. Basically, it's kind of like animal blood sacrificing type deal. But he was doing it with water. <clears throat> okay? So then... Uh, we go to Acts 2 and um, 3 and 4. Uh, actually, we can go to Acts 2, 2, 3, and 4. But here is where we find that a lot of the uninformed teachers, that they love to use this passage right here as evidence that uh, you have to speak in tongues for... Uh, in order to uh, the proof as proof that you have received the ruach. So in other words, they're saying if you if if you say I have the ruach, but they, but you don't speak in tongues, they're saying you're lying. Okay, and this is what they're so they're saying speaking in tongues is the evidence that you are uh, you have the spirit and you are being delivered. You have deliverance because you have the Ruach in you. But, you. but you're lying unless you can speak in tongues. This is what they teach. And this is the passage they love. This is their number one go-to passage to prove that. Okay, and we're, if we take a really close look at it, use common sense, we'll see that it just isn't so. So he goes in here and it says, and when the, the day of the festival of weeks had come, they were all with one mind in one place. Uh, so they were up in the upper chamber during Pentecost. We all know that. 
And suddenly there came a sound from the heaven. It's a rushing mighty wind. So they heard a wind coming. You know, And it filled all the house where they were setting. Okay, so there's a wind inside the house. They were hearing it. And there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire. As a fire. So he's going to immerse them with the spirit, the Ruach, and fire. Right? And, and settled on each one of them. So what does that mean? Well, that means that uh, the Ruach fell on them and indwelled them or settled in them, you know, as, uh, and they became his temple because he indwelled them, his, his Mishkam. And they were all filled with the Ruach HaKadosh. All were filled. So there's no doubt they were all filled with the Ruach. It says all of them were filled with the Ruach HaKadosh, the 120. Where they were all immersed with the Ruach HaKadosh, as it just said it. And they were all filled with the Ruach HaKadosh and began to speak with other tongues as the Ruach gave them to speak. See that? So they were all filled with the Ruach and began to speak with other tongues as the Ruach gave them to speak. So there you go. This is why this is what they're you know, why they say that you have to if you've got the Ruach that you need to speak with tongues, okay? So if we move over here. Through Acts 2 38, we read, And Kepha said to them, Repent, and let each one of you be immersed in the name of Yahushua Mashiach for the forgiveness of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Ruach HaKadosh for the purposes to you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as Yahuwah or Elohim shall call. So, this right here is what Peter is saying is repent, be immersed in the name of Yahushua in water. About to be born of the water and this Ruach, right? And then he says, then you shall receive the gift of the Ruach HaKadosh. All right. And he also says, this promises to you and your children and to all who are far off, as many as Yahuwah Elohim shall call force for everybody even those are going to live through the last days on into the tribulation days it's for everybody so this wasn't a one occurrence uh isolated uh occurrence okay this is this was going to continue to happen in the last days which was the last two days of creation or the last two thousand years okay until the end of the age so this is what this is saying, and uh, it, who knows why Peter broke it down into that uh, structure, repent, be immersed in the name of Yahushua, and then uh, receive the gift of the Ruach HaKadosh, okay, for the promises to you. So this is a promise from who? Peter? No. It's a promise from Yahuwah. That's who it's from. Okay, so uh, there are times where people do receive the Ruach HaKadosh before they get water immersed. Okay, we won't get into that, but there is. And why Peter broke it down the way he did is anybody's guess. It could be that that's what he thought at the particular time that that was the way it had to be. It could be that. Uh, he, he was so new, it was such a new thing that he didn't understand. He, he, just, he just said it in, order, in, in, that, in that fashion, you know, uh, without even thinking about it. Does it say that uh, Peter was water immersed? 
before he received this Ruach? I can't find in there anywhere where it says that. I can't find anywhere in Scripture where it even says that Peter was immersed. Okay? Definitely not in the name of Yahusha. So, who knows? If he was immersed before, if they, maybe they all went and was immersed in the name of Yahusha while they were waiting on the Ruach in the upper chamber, you know, in Jerusalem to come and, and uh, the outpouring of the Ruach on them. Who, who knows? They don't really say. But maybe that's what happened, and that's why he said it in that order. I don't know, but I do know that there's other examples of people receiving the Ruach first, and there's definitely one huge example of someone being promised uh, eternal life, uh, deliverance, and didn't even get immersed. And that was the stake, the, uh, the, uh, the thief on the stake next to him, right? That was staked. So... There's no doubt he was definitely uh, uh, probably Yehudim because if he was a thief, like they said, then he was breaking one of the ten love commands, right? Number eight, where uh, you do not steal. And, of course, we most of us know that any of, violation of any of the ten love commands or ten to borrow them, uh, was uh, the penalty for breaking any of them was death. So if he was a thief, that's why he was uh, Yehudim. That's why he was hanging on that stake next to Yahusha. Okay, so... Yeah, so the next one then would be... Uh, let's go to Acts 10. Take a look at Acts 10 real quick. Uh, 44... We can go to 43. It says, uh, so Acts 10, 43. To this one all the prophets bear witness that through his name everyone believing in him receives forgiveness of sins. So through his name everyone believing in him receives forgiveness of sins. While Kepha was still speaking these words, the Ruach HaKadosh fell upon all those hearing the word. And those of the circumcision who believed were astounded. So those were obviously the Yehudim who was with Peter, or who was standing there listening to Peter. As many as came with Kepha, so they, all the ones that came with Kepha, because the gift of the Kodesh Ruach had been poured out on the nations also. So all the people that weren't of the Jewish uh, race or Hebrews uh, were totally blown away because the outpouring of the Ruach had fallen upon the Gentiles who were present in their presence. For they were hearing them speaking with tongues and extolling Elohim. So here, so this is another passage they use to try to prove that you have to talk in tongues if you receive the Ruach. Well, right here it says, For they were hearing them speaking with tongues and extolling Elohim. So there's no, you know, it doesn't say that they all spoke with tongues and then they all extolled him. It said, it said that, they, that they were speaking with tongues and extolling him. So perhaps, you know, and I'm just saying perhaps here, some of them were speaking with tongues and the others were extolling uh, Yahuwah, you know, after they received the Ruach. What does extolling mean? Well, basically, it's, uh, you know, pra highly praising him, you know. Probably hallelujah, you know. They were just praising him and worshiping him, you know, to the highest uh, standards, okay. Uh, and then some were speaking in tongues, okay. So, uh, yes, yeah, speaking in tongues can be a sign that they have received the Ruach, but extolling him upon receiving the Ruach uh, 
you know, uh, giving him, uh, you know, praising him highly uh, can also be a sign, is what it seems to me. Okay. So then Peter goes on and says, and then Kepha answered, Is anyone able to forbid water that these should not be immersed who have received the Ruach? Even also, even as also we. And so here Peter is like just totally, I mean, the, all the Jews were astonished, okay, including Peter. Okay, they were blown away that the Ruach had fell on Gentiles because they didn't think that uh, the Gentiles could be delivered, okay? And when that happened, they knew. <laughs> there was not, not a shadow of a doubt that the Gentiles could be delivered because they just received Yahuwah spirit, the Ruach in them. All right, so there ain't no way they're going to say, oh, they can't be saved, and there they're standing there with the Ruach in them, speaking in tongues and extolling Yahuwah. <laughs> <coughs> so here Peter is just so blowed away and he's like uh you know basically is anyone can anybody forbid water like he's saying why do they I mean they received the Ruach you know before they were in water but does, does that mean they don't have to be born in the water they don't have to convert to being a Jew through their water immersion being born from above you know, into the spiritual world, putting their flesh, putting their flesh down, you know, I mean, who knows, you know, what was going in Peter's mind, but he obviously was blowed, his mind was blowed, and so now he's even, he's starting to question, do they even need to be water immersed since they've already received the Ruach, you know, that's what he's saying here, to paraphrase him, and he commanded them to be immersed in the name of Yahushua Mashiach. Then they asked him to remain a few yama. So he came to his senses and said, Ah, oh, wait a minute now. You have to be water immersed. You know, you received the Ruach, but let's get, let's, get, let's get you fully cleaned up. And so he commanded them to be immersed in the name of Yahushua with water. Okay. Because uh, he says, if it is anyone able to forbid water, so now we know that he was that he was speaking of water immersions. There's two immersions. There's water immersion and there's the immersion with the ruach hakodesh. And as you read through scripture, you have to kind of determine through context which one they're talking about. Because sometimes when it says immerse, they're not. It's not talking about water immersion. It's talking about spiritual immersion, okay? And in this case, it, it's talking about both in this passage, is it not? And they were they received the outpouring of the Ruach HaKadosh and were immersed by the Ruach, whose name is Yahusha, the no spirit of Yahusha, before their water immersion. And then they were immersed. So it wasn't just a few. No, it, was, it was a lot of them that happened, too. So I wouldn't put this as a as a one time a deal because there's other proofs, you know, in scripture that people receive the ruach first, you know, and then there's other ones that's not quite clear. But uh the main thing is, you know, you have to be born of the water and the spirit. And when you're reading scripture and it says immersion. You know, you have to read in context and slowly in, in order to identify whether it's speaking of water immersion or spiritual immersion. Because it could mean either one or both. And, uh, you know, Later on, Peter gives testimony to this. And uh, you can pick that up down there in 11. Uh, 15 says, And as I began to speak, the set-apart Ruach fell upon them, speaking of the Gentiles, as upon us at the beginning. So he's talking to his the other 
uh, apostles or whatever, people that were in the upper chamber. And I remember the word, and I remembered the word of the master, how he said, Yehukanan indeed immersed in water, but you shall be immersed in the Ruach HaKadosh. See, so here again, Peter's confirming immersion in the Ruach HaKadosh. So the immersion, man, he coming, he's going inside of you. That's inner immersion, not outward immersion. Okay, he's going to indwell you. You're going to become his temple. That's what they did. He became the Mishkam. He, he, he came upon them and indwelled them as, as they being his Mishkam. That means he dwelled in them, not outside around them. So the water immersion is the outward cleansing. And then, of course, the Ruach Kakadesh is the inward immersion, is the in. In, inward cleaning when he comes into you man you're clean inside he's cleaning you anything that you who it cleans don't you dare say it's unclean because if he's in it it's clean you better believe that so if Elohim gave them the same gift as he gave us when we believed on the master Yahushua Mashiach how was I able to withstand Yahuwah? See that? And having heard this, they were silent and praised Yahuwah, saying, Then Elohim has indeed also given to the nations repentance to life. So the light just came on. Uh-oh. You know, Elohim has also offered eternal life to everyone, the entire world. Even the nation's repentance of life. Okay? Or repentance to life. So you repent to receive life. And you believe not in just Yahusha, but everything that Yahusha did. Okay? Including being born of a virgin woman. Um, his uh, atonement sacrifice and his death. His burial, three days and three nights in the tomb. His resurrection from the dead. His ascension back into the Shemayim, back into being the greatness of the Father. Okay, the Creator and the Father of life. And then coming back as our Comforter, uh, the Ruach HaKadosh, and dwelling us in us being His temple. Okay, you have to believe all of that. Immersion of the water and the immersion of the Ruach, everything he did, you have to believe. And that belief in Yahusha and all that Yahusha has done for us, okay, is the justification for your uh, forgiveness, for you to be forgiven of your sins and uh, given uh, immortality in the, in the long, in the end. Okay, so let's go over to, well, let's go back to Acts real quick, quick. There is another one here we should touch on. It's found in Acts 19.6. So 19.6, it says, well, let's back up again here. Uh, and, and this is a, a basically another thing they like to point to, but this is, this is re-immersion. So what's happening here is uh, some of these folks have been, were immersed by Yahukanan, the immerser, okay? Which immersed for re, uh, remission of sins, right? You know, for the, uh, in other words, they would admit their sins, go under the water, and then they would be temporarily cleaned by the immersion, right? And uh, back in the old days, beyond that, uh, the ancient times, uh, they were immersing people um, in water uh, as uh, uh, to be kind of re-clean, reborn through the water and, and become a Jew, okay? In order to become a Yehudim. 
All right, so that was in the mindset of the of the Jewish people back then too, you know, because that was their culture. So you got to remember all that. So immersion's kind of it kind of uh, you know came along through immersion, being immersed by water to be a Jew and to become a Yehudim to their culture and their race. Um, and to be like them, you know, or in or to being immersed as a cleansing uh, of your sins after confession, and then into being immersed into Yahushua, Ham, the body of Yahushua Hamashiach, into the spiritual realm, joining with the Ruach of uh, Yahushua as one, together as his bride. You enter into the Ruach, into the reign of the kingdom, into the covenant, if you will, the blood covenant of Yahuwah through your water immersion through Yahusha. That's why you have to call on the name of Yahusha, because he's the door that allows you into the reign, kingdom reign. You have to go through him. So you go through him to enter into the covenant as well. All right. So that's what it's, <coughs> you know, it's became over time. You know, it's evolved, if you will, water immersion. So 19, I guess we need to back up to verse 1 to understand this. It says, and it came to be while Apollos was at uh, Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper parts, came to Ephesus and have, and having found some Talmudim, he said to them, did you receive the Ruach HaKadosh? So he's in, these are Ephesians he's talking to now. <clears throat> did you receive the Ruach HaKadosh when you believed? Say, when you believed, not when you were immersed, when you believed. And they said to him, no, we have not even heard that there is a Ruach HaKadosh. So they're not even aware of they're being immersed by the Ruach HaKadosh. And he said to them, And to what then were you immersed? So if you weren't immersed by the Ruach HaKadosh, what were you immersed with? See that? See, a lot of people try to think this was with water, but he was, he was asking them if they received the Ruach. And they're saying they didn't even know about the Ruach. And he said, well, what were you immersed with then? Not the Ruach. See? And they said into Yahukanan's immersion. So now they're telling him that, oh, well, we were immersed with, with uh, immersion by Yahukanan for remission of our sins. We, you know, we just went in there and confessed our sins and, and got temporarily cleaned up. Similar to animal blood offering, right? And Paul said, Yehuchanan had immersed with an immersion of repentance. See? They confessed their sins, repenting. So they went in the water and they're temporarily forgiven of those sins. Their sins are temporarily covered up, just like blood, animal blood sacrifice was. Saying to the people that they should believe in the one who is coming after him. That is in Mashiach Yahusha. And when they heard this, they were immersed in the name of the Master Yahusha. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Ruach HaKadosh came upon them, and they were speaking in tongues and prophesying. And all the men were about twelve. So there were about twelve men, twelve Ephesians. Now this is an extremely important passage here, too, because you've got to kind of get a grasp on what just happened. <coughs> <clears throat> okay, so Paul comes, asks them if they received the Ruach when they believed. They didn't even know nothing about it, no. Well, what were you immersed with then if you weren't immersed with the Ruach? Well, we were immersed with John with water through Yahukanan, John the Immerser, okay? So then, uh, he, Paul tells them that he was immersing with repentance but say, and saying to the people they should believe in the one who is coming after him, the Master Yahusha. 
Okay, and then when they heard this, they were immersed in the name of Master Husha. So what they did was what he what he did was the subject changed from the being immersed in the ruach to when they mentioned they were they didn't know of the ruach, they were immersed in water. So the the uh, conversation changed at that point the context of the conversation to water immersion. So then Paul said, well, you know, that he just did that. Is repentance, immersed in repentance, but you need to be immersed in the name of Yahushua Mashiach. Okay? And that's what, and they understood that, so now they went and got re-water immersed in the name of Yahushua. See that? Because the subject had changed. Okay, so now they were re-immersed with water into the name of Yahushua Mashiach. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Ruach came upon them, and they were speaking in tongues and prophesying. So now Paul laid his hands on them after they were immersed with water in the name of Yahushua, and they received the Ruach HaKadosh. So now they were immersed in the Ruach. So they were immersed with the water in the name of Yahushua, and now they were immersed in the Ruach HaKadosh. Okay? And they were speaking in tongues. So they, it was that some of them or all of them? It doesn't say. It just says they were speaking in tongues and, and prophesying. So were they all speaking in tongues at once? At once, And then they all stopped and then they all began prophesying all at once? It doesn't say that. It just says they were speaking, some of them, it says, uh, came upon them, and they were speaking in tongues and prophesying. So it could mean that some of them were speaking in tongues, and some of them were prophesying, which are two different spiritual gifts. See that? So maybe uh, this is sort of proof, maybe, and it's not without a shadow of a doubt, but it could be proof that when you receive the Ruach, you could be prophesying too. So, so far now, we've noticed, if, we've, if we're paying attention here, that the ones that have see, received the outpouring of the Ruach into them, the indwelling spirit of Yahushua in them, they have speak, spoke with tongues, extolled, greatly, highly extolled, praised Yahuwah, spoke in tongues, and prophesied. So here we go. That's three things, right, that's happened. So were they So were they all speaking in tongues? Were they all prophesying? Were they all extolling Yahuwah? Doesn't say that. It says and. And they did that. They were speaking in tongues and they extolled. They were extolling Yahuwah. They were speaking in tongues and prophesying. So maybe some were speaking in tongues and others were prophesying. See what I'm saying now? And all the men were about 12. Okay. <clears throat> Very interesting passage here, folks. Read that yourself. Acts 19. Very powerful, I think. I mean, it's... <clears throat> we all seem to read things and take things out of context. You know, and sometimes we just, I think we, we, we leave words out. Now, we read so fast that we leave words out. We're just assuming things, you know, without really sitting there and dwelling on the what we're being told, you know, and trying to get the, the picture in our mind what's going on without before we move on and keep reading. You know, I think we need to stop sometimes reading Scripture and stop and, and get the vision, man. Just really you know, dwell on it to let the vision come in clearly what was going on so we can actually see them doing all this, you know. And to me, it seems like to me, especially in verse 19 there, Acts, that uh, some of those 12 men uh, were speaking in tongues and some of those 12 men were prophesying. So I think they received different spiritual gifts at the same at that same event. Yeah. That's what it seems like to me. So Matthew 4, I indeed immerse you in water to repentance, but he was coming after me, 
is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to bear. He shall immerse you in the Ruach HaKadosh in fire. Come on, take a break. We'll be right back. I'll come back and we'll talk about being immersed in fire. See you in just a few seconds. Hello, I'm back. All right, so let's start back where we left off. <clears throat> Me, Matthew uh, 3, verse 11 says, I indeed immerse you in water to repentance. Now this is Yohukanan speaking. Remember, we just read about the people that were immersed with the immersion of Yohukanan. I indeed immerse you in water to repentance. So I say, it's confirmation what he was doing. He wasn't reimmersing them in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach. Because, why? Because Yahushua had not uh, ascended yet. He, he had not sent the Comforter yet. Okay, so they, he, they, he couldn't be immersed in his name yet because he hadn't completed the salvation plan. Okay, or completed his works fulfilled the Torah and what it needed to be done in order for us to be delivered. Okay, so until he completed everything um, that he was sent to do, uh, then we couldn't be immersed in his name yet. See what I'm saying? So, uh, Paul, I mean, uh, Yahukanan is very clear here that what he was immersing uh, why he was immersing people with water. I indeed immersed you in water to repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to bear. He shall immerse you in the Ruach HaKadosh and fire. So here we have a third confirmation, or fourth, that... Uh, you will be immersed in the Ruach HaKadosh. And then John adds a very interesting suffix to the end of this statement, which is by fire, and by fire, and fire. Okay? So very interesting, okay, what the fire is. And I and I think I mean, there's a lot of different opinions, you know what I'm saying? But to me, I think the fire is your zeal. It's a zeal, being zealous for Yahusha and spreading the Basora to, to people. So you're on fire or you're immersed with the Ruach. And fire means you are now going around teaching the Basora, spreading the Basora with the don't spread the Ruach in you. And it has put you on fire lit you on fire, man. You're, in other words, you're extremely zealous. You have a lot of zeal for the, the Sora and for Yahusha. You know, that's what I think it means. And I don't think you can have that type of understanding, zeal, and uh, and love for Yahuwah and others. It comes that unless you're immersed with the Ruach. It only comes from when, after you've been immersed with the Ruach HaKadosh and then in fire because man now you're on fire for the for Yahushua man <clears throat> you're doing everything you can <clears throat> can to spread the Basora and increase the kingdom of Yahuwah the reign of Yahuwah to help it yet Yezreel grow in numbers you know find the lost sheep so I'm saying you're on fire man you gotta you know you got a purpose now you got a lot of zeal for Yahusha. That's what I think. I mean, so I know there's other opinions on that, but anyways, that's what I think is happening there. Now, if we go over to uh, Ephesians, we can read this. It says in Ephesians 4, it says, Let no corrupt word come out of your mouth, but only such as is good for the use of building up. So as to impart what is pleasant to the hearers. And do not grieve 
the Ruach HaKadosh of Yahuwah, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, bitterness and wrath and displeasure and uproar and slander be put away from you, along with all evil, and be kind towards one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as Yahuwah also forgave you in Mashiach. Become them imitators of Yahuwah as beloved children, and walk in love as Mashiach also has loved us, and gave himself for us a gift and an offering to Yahuwah for a sweet-smelling fragrance. So there you go. So <clears throat> do not grieve the Ruach HaKadosh of Yahuwah by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. So in other words, you know, start imitating Yahusha. You know, imitate Yahusha, walk in the true pattern of Yahusha, and have a zeal or be on fire for Yahusha and his word, you know, his Besorah. The good news, you know, of what he did, that he came, and what he did, his works that he did, in order for us to be forgiven of our sins and be given eternal life. Okay, you should be zealous for that. I mean, that's that's powerful stuff, man. That's some good news, man. Hey, we don't have to die forever. We don't have to die and go to dust and never know anything. Uh, that's going on ever again. Now we can be raised up from that and back to and given back eternal life in perfection, in love, pure love. Yeah, it's powerful, powerful message right there. Powerful testimony. You know, it needs to be spread with zeal. So here we find out that we can grieve the ruach, you know, that's in us. The Ruach of Yahuwah was given to us so that we were sealed for the day of redemption. That seals us for the day of redemption. Man, do you have to have that Ruach, man? You have to. That's pretty obvious. To be sealed for the day of redemption. And so how do you grieve the Ruach? Having bitterness, wrath, displeasure, uproar, slander, you know, evil, you know, that kind of stuff. So be, you, you, you know, walk in humility, gentleness, meekness, be kind towards one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, okay? And that way we don't grieve the Ruach. We have to be imitators of the Ruach. If we're imitating the Ruach, then we're not going. We're not going to uh, grieve him. If we go the opposite of what he is and who he is, then we're going to grieve him. You know? Can you imagine? You have the Ruach in you, sealing you for the day of redemption, and you're doing evil and these other things, uh, and then you're grieving him. He's like, oh man, I, I, he can't hardly stand to stay in you because you're letting the flesh, the mind of the flesh, control what you're doing. You know, he can't hardly take it. You know, it's grieving him. So don't grieve him, man. If you go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, uh, verse 19 says, Do not quench the Ruach. Bam, that's it. Then right after it says, Do not despise prophecies. Prove them all. Hold fast what is good. Keep back from every form of wickedness. And the Yahuwah of peace himself set you completely apart in your entire Ruach and being and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Master Yahusha Mashiach. He who calls you is trustworthy who also shall do it. <clears throat> so there. Again. It tells us, do not quench the Ruach. Now, what does that mean? Well, 
We just found out that we are immersed with the Ruach HaKadosh in fire. We have a zeal for Yahusha and his message, right? And the good news, the Basora. And if we quench that by telling people, uh, you know, you can't, there ain't no such thing as spiritual gifts. Oh, calm down. You're just being zealous. You don't have to do all that. Just chill out, man. Obey the commands and sit there and be quiet, man. Just be obedient. You don't have to do nothing. Does that, does that have to do with obedience? If, if it doesn't, then what are you doing it for? In other words, they're discouraging you. By discouraging you, okay, and making you feel like your your zeal for Yahusha, okay, and for others, your love for Yahuwah and others is is worthless, basically. They're quenching the ruach. They're putting out the fire, man. See? And fire. He, they're putting out your fire. That's what quenching is. They're quenching the fire. Okay? So they're they're, in other words, they're raining on your parade, okay, <laughs> if you will. That's a pretty good idiom, really. They're raining on your parade, okay. They're letting the air out of your balloon. Your balloon's going flat, okay. Why? Because they're quenching the Ruach. That's poison. That's wormwood, man. That's, that, if someone's on seal for you, who? Let them be on zeal for Yahuwah, and let them proclaim the Basora, and let them brag on Yahuwah all they want. Because he, that's how he immersed them with his real cockadesh and fire, man. He gave them fire, he gave them zeal for him. And you're going to quench it by telling them to, to chill out? You don't have to do all that? Oh, man. You're quenching the Ruach. It says, do not quench the Ruach. We need to learn to bridle our tongues, tame our tongues, really, man. I mean, it's it's almost ridiculous how we all, and, and, and when I say we all, I'm including myself, man. You know, how we all just think we know everything, and, and we tell everybody else how to act and what to do and what to say, and, you know, oh, he just being zealous. He's just a zealot. He just being zealous. He's kind of zealous acting person. You know, who in the heck we think we are, man? We're gonna quench the ruach. It says, "Do not quench the ruach. Do not put out the fire, folks. Do not despise prophecies. Prove them, but do not despise them." So, what does that mean? Well, do not despise prophecy because when people are, there's examples when people are received the immersion of the Ruach, they began to prophesy, man. Even Peter himself prophesied, didn't he? He sure did. He absolutely did. Next, too. He received that Ruach. He began to prophesy to Joel, too. He sure did about the day of Yahuwah, actually. Uh, so don't despise prophecies. Why? Because, man, if we go back here and take a look at Revelations, I believe chapter 19 says it fairly well. Um, <clears throat> verse 19, uh, chapter 19, verse 10, And I fell at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, See, do not do it. I am your fellow servant. And of your brothers who possess the witness of Yahusha. Worship Yahuwah. For the witness of Yahusha is the Ruach of prophecy. That's why we don't despise prophecy. Did you hear what that just said? For the witness of Yahusha. So Yahusha's witness is the spirit of prophecy. It's the Ruach of prophecy. That's Yahusha's witness. In other words, that's that's Yahusha prophesying, man. 
So that's prove prophecy, but do not despise it. You should love it, really, because it's actually the testimony of Yahusha. That's what it just said. Worship Yahuwah, for the witness of Yahusha is the Ruach of prophecy. Do not despise prophecies. So, man, these are spiritual gifts, okay? And we don't despise them. We don't talk against them. We don't pretend like they're not real. Or we don't, you don't need to do that. You just need to sit there and be still. Be, be a wreck like this. Don't sit, just be obedient. Don't you dare turn left. Don't you do, don't you do nothing. Be obedient. No, let's quench the Ruach. Huh? Let's despise prophecy. Let's despise all the spiritual gifts. Act like we know what to do. Ain't none of us knows what to do. We can only yield to the Ruach HaKadosh. Let him lead us into all truth. Do not quench the Ruach. Do not put out somebody's fire that they've been given through the Ruach. They've been immersed with the Ruach and fire. They, Yahuwah wants them to be on fire. He wants them to show that they have zeal for him. And Yahusha. Mm, mm, mm. All right. Let's <clears throat> this, this turn over here to... Uh, 1 Corinthians, real quick. And uh, it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. But as it has been written, I has not seen and ear has not heard, nor have entered into the heart of man what Yahuwah has prepared for those who love him. But Yahuwah has revealed them to us through his Ruach. See, everything is revealed to us through his Ruach. Not through men's teachings. Not through men's opinions. Not through men's understandings or interpretations of the word. But through his Ruach, which indwells us. If you don't have the indwelling spirit of the Ruach in you, you can be tossed about by any any uh any rumor or winds or anything you know fleeing winds born winds you, anything i mean if you don't have the ruach you're liable to believe anything you know you, you likely believe that yahushua was talking about eating his 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 flesh and drinking his blood for real in a literal sense being a, telling you to be a cannibal i mean you might believe that they've totally distorted and perverted the entire scriptures, Old, Old Testament and New Testament, been rewritten and redone by men to make you a cannibal or Satan worship or something. I mean, people, there's so much stuff out there, it's not even funny, man. Stop listening to it. Stop listening to men, period. Nobody knows anything. Just Yahuwah knows. Yahuwah knows. Men are all liars, including myself. Everybody is a liar. Let all men be liars. And Yahuwah be truth. And otherwise, what do we believe in now? We're believing on Yahuwah's word and his promise for the real Kodesh to indwell us and give us eternal life, raise us from the dead. Okay, so if we make him out to be a liar, I mean, he could be lying about that then. See what I'm saying? So let all things from Yahuwah, from the Ruach, be truth, and all men liars. <clears throat> but Yahuwah has revealed them to us through his Ruach, for the Ruach searches all things, even the depths of Yahuwah. For who... For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the Ruach of the man that is in him? So ain't nobody can read your mind. Just your, just your inner man can uh, know what's going on with you. So also the thoughts of Yahuwah. No one has known except the Ruach 
of Yahuwah. And we have received not the Ruach of the world, but the Ruach that is from Yahuwah. In order to know what Yahuwah has favorably given us, which we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Ruach HaKadosh teaches. Comparing Ruach-like things with Ruach-like things, but the worldly man does not receive the things of the Ruach of Yahuwah, for they are foolishness to him, and he is unable to know them, because they are abstractly discerned. But he who is Ruach-like discerns indeed all things, but he himself is discerned by no one. For who has known the mind of Yahuwah? Who shall instruct him? But we have the mind of Mashiach. If you have the indwelling spirit of the Ruach HaKadosh in you, you do. Okay. Very powerful, man. Very, very, very powerful passage here. Uh, so basically, no one knows what's in your mind except you. Okay? No one knows what's in Yahuwah's mind except him. Okay? That's what it's saying. <clears throat> the Ruach teaches comparing Ruach-like things with Ruach-like things. So if you have the Ruach in you, he's teaching your Ruach, your spirit, about spiritual matters, heavenly matters, and they can, and you can understand and get, uh, um, you know, um, teachings by the Ruach that no one else can understand because it's the Ruach teaching your Ruach, not your flesh teaching, his spirit teaching your flesh. See what I mean? But the worldly man does not receive the things of the Ruach. See, so the flesh, the worldly man, the mind of the flesh, cannot receive the things of the Ruach of Yahuwah. For they are foolishness to him. So in the spiritual mind, you receive the things of the spirit of the Ruach and understand them. And, and you get an understanding of them, but in the mind of the flesh or the worldly man, you do not because you think they're foolishness. And he is unable to know them. So you're unable to know them if you're in the worldly man, the mind of the flesh, because they are abstractly discerned. But he who is Ruach-like discerns indeed all things, but he who himself is discerned by no one. <clears throat> so that means no one knows what... What's going on in your mind between your spirit and Yahusha's spirit? Just you know. He, but he who is Ruach-like, that means you're walking in the spirit and the truth, discerns indeed all things that the Ruach is teaching your spirit, but he himself is discerned by no one. Nobody else can discern what's being taught to you. They can't understand it, especially if you don't tell them. They can't read your mind or Yahusha's mind. You don't know what's going on in your spiritual being. For he who has known the mind of Yahuwah, nobody. Who shall instruct him? Nobody. But we have the mind of Mashiach, if indeed the Mashiach indwells us. See that? So you have to have the Ruach HaKadosh in you to understand Ruach-like things or heavenly things. Or scriptures. Why? Because scriptures is Ruach like. They were written by Yahusha, influenced by Yahuwah, and only in the mind of the flesh, in the spiritual realm, can you understand it. Can you understand it in the mind of the flesh? They can under people in the mind of the flesh can understand literal things, but they can't go beyond the literal. That's why you have people running around thinking that Yahushua was teaching us to eat his flesh and drink his blood, uh, uh, teaching cannibalism. Because <laughs> they're in the mind of the flesh and they're just, they're just understanding that in a literal sense. They can't understand what that spiritual meaning is behind that. And the spiritual meaning behind that is that Yahushua is the manna from heaven and the living waters. Okay? 
and by believing in him, we receive his Ruach HaKadash. Open wide and let the living waters be poured into your mouth and eat of the manna from heaven, right? That's the Ruach HaKadash. He ain't talking about literally eating his, being a cannibal, eating his flesh and drinking his blood. Just the one, the only reason he was saying that was to prove that those people could not receive, that would, did not have the, uh, the understanding of the Ruach. They weren't walking in the spirit and the truth, man. They were taking everything he said literal, and therefore they couldn't understand the message. You see? And there's no way anybody was going to understand anyway until after his works were completed, he sent back down the Ruach, the Comforter, to teach us. <clears throat> See what I'm saying? So, <clears throat> that's pretty clear, really. So, now, I guess then the other place to go is to uh, over to 1 Corinthians 12. Okay, and that's that's pretty much, uh, you know, pretty much all about the uh, spiritual gifts, that proving that there's just more. And, uh, if Really, if you get time, read 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14 in context very carefully uh, because this is a lot of the, the uninformed teachers, you know, they try to get on here and they twist and twist and spin the scriptures to try to make it fit into their denominational uh, dogmas, you know, and... Uh, uh, you need to read it yourself and get discernment uh, through the Ruach. Okay, if you don't have the Ruach, then get praying for the for you who would give you the gift of the Ruach. Um, if and get your water immersion done in the name of Yahusha, repent with a repenter's heart, and you're truly sorry for disobeying Yahuwah's commands. And breaking his love uh, commands and uh, being disobedient and being a criminal and all that. You know, you have to really mean it, though, man. I mean, you, you need to come. If you're not humbled, dropping down on the floor, on the ground, your face on the ground, you know, crying, totally broken down, beat up, broken down, and sorry because you've realized how uh, bad of a person you have been, uh, then you haven't got that repent, repent of heart yet, man. You know, because once you get to that point, boy, uh, Yahuwah will start, he'll, he'll, he'll hear your, your prayer of repentance. If you just do it half hazardly, like you don't really care, you know, half heartedly, oh, yeah, I'm sorry for doing it. No, will you save me? You know, I mean, you're really not, you haven't, you're not broken down in spirit and body, you know, down to the ground, man, crawling around like a worm, you know, then you really haven't reached the stage of repentance required to get you who is attention, in my opinion. All right, so anyway, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and concerning Ruach-like gifts, brothers, I do not wish you to be ignorant. You know that you were nations led away to the dumb idols, even as you might be led. Therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Ruach HaKadosh, or the Ruach of Yahuwah, says Yahusha is a curse. And no one is able to say that Yahusha is master except by the Ruach HaKadosh. So there you go. So you can't call him master and him accept you or know you except by the Ruach HaKadosh. You know, and, uh, you know, we have, an, we have several examples through scripture about that, but uh, basically uh, a lot of people think that they know him and they're doing, going around doing uh, deeds they think will get them into uh, the reign of the kingdom. And then, and then they find out that he didn't know them because they didn't have the real cock. And death and dwell in them. 
That's why he doesn't know them. Therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Ruach of Yahuwah says Yahuwah, Yahusha is a curse. So if somebody's bad-mouthing Yahusha in any way, they don't have the Ruach. Because they could, if they have the Ruach, they couldn't be talking against him. That's what that's saying. And no one is able to say that Yahusha is master except by the Ruach HaKadosh. So there you go. No one is able to say he's master. He's not their master. He doesn't know them unless you have the Ruach HaKadosh, which is the indwelling spirit of Yahusha in you, whose name, by the way, is Yahusha, because he came into his name. Right? It's all the Father's name. It's all the Father. I am your deliverer, Yahuwah. Yahusha and the Ruach HaKadosh all have the same name. And there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Ruach. So there's different gifts, but it's all from the same Ruach that's in you. It's the Ruach in you doing it. There are different kinds of services, but the same Master. And there are different kinds of workings, but it's the same Yahuwah who is working all in all. Same Yahuwah, man. And to each one is giving the manifestation of the Ruach for profiting. For to one is giving a word of wisdom through the Ruach. So there you go. <clears throat> you could gain, get the Ruach HaKadosh, immersed with the Ruach HaKadosh, and your gift could be wisdom. See that? Um, the word of wisdom... For to one is given a word of wisdom through the Ruach, and to another a word of knowledge according to the same Ruach. Same Ruach. And to another belief by the same Ruach. And to another gifts of healing by the same Ruach. So they could get the, the gift of healing. Go around and lay hands on people and, and, and heal them through the Ruach doing it through them. It's not the flesh doing it. It's the Ruach in them. The flesh has been put to death through their water immersion. And to another operations of powers. Operations of powers? Wow. And to another prophecy. See that? And to another discerning of Ruachs. Discerning between the Ruach of evil or delusion and the Ruach of truth. And to another, kinds of tongues. Speaking in tongues. And to another, interpretation of tongues. To know what that person is saying when they're talking. Okay? That's another gift. So you could, in other words, if somebody could start speaking in tongues and uh, all of a sudden you're sitting there hearing them just like they're talking your language you've got the interpretation of tongues man that gift this is where the Ruach's letting you know what he's saying through them in another foreign tongue a different tongue see by one in the same Ruach but one in the same Ruach one in the same Ruach works all of these, distributing to each one individually as he intends. For as the body is one and has many components, but all the components of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is the Mashiach. For indeed, by one Ruach, we were all immersed into one body whether Yehudim or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and we were all made to drink into one Ruach, for indeed the body is not one component, but many. <clears throat> so here we go. For indeed, by one Ruach, we are all immersed into one body. Okay, this is by the Spirit. This is spiritual immersion, folks. This is what this is talking about. There's, you got to understand the difference between water immersion and spiritual immersion. Okay? They're speaking of the body, so also is the Mashiach. 
are one body. So also is in is the Mashiach, for indeed by one Ruach, see, by one Ruach, we were all immersed. We were immersed by the Ruach. See, that's not talking about water immersion here. It's talking about a spiritual immersion through the Ruach HaKadosh, immersed you, entered you, dwelling in you, into one body. We are all have the same Ruach in us, the Mashiach, the Husha. That's it. There's no other spirit, man. You know, so if you have the Ruach, you're his body because we all have that same one in spirit. It's the only spirit, man. It's Ruach, HaKadosh. That's why we're one body. We're all immersed into the same body by the same one spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh, Yahusha. Okay, so just go ahead and like I said, read all that, but very interestingly, um, if you would get down here in the 12, it says, uh, there should be no division in the body, I'm at 25, 12, 25, but that the parts should have the same concern one for another, and if one component suffers, all the parts suffer with it, or if one component is esteemed, all the components rejoice with it because it's the same Ruach in all of us. We're all feeling the same thing. <laughs> Believe it or not, we may we may appear to have our differences and everything, but we all feel the same things, man. We think the same stuff. We, we think the same stuff. It's all through the same Ruach, man. Different gifts, you know, different functions for the body, but we're still the same body. We still have all one thought and one uh, and one thing going on there through the ru the one ruach. So we're all connected through that one ruach, is what I'm saying. And you are a body of Mashiach and components individually, and Yahuwah has appointed these in the assembly. First emissaries. What's an emissary? That's somebody who's taught by someone or given a message from someone to go teach it to someone else something that lives over there somewhere you know that's when that's like that's what an emissary is remember how Yahusha divided those people up in twos I think they were all in put in twos and then they were he was they were sent out to, to preach the Basora and then they all came back and said, wow, man, we were throwing out demons, casting out demons, all kinds of stuff in your name, you know. They were emissaries. They were t sent by him to go do stuff to other people. Secondly, prophets. Thirdly, teachers. And that, miracles. After that, miracles. Then gifts of healing helps, ministrations, kinds of tongues. Okay. Are all emissaries? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Do all have gifts of healings? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly seek the better gifts. And yet I show you a more excellent way. Okay, so the better gifts, you know, prophecy, things that edify the body, right? What this is saying here is that not that this is all stuff has been put away and is no longer valid. What this is saying is we all don't have the same gift given to us. You know, although it's the same Ruach, we're all different components and we all have different talents and different gifts given to us by the one Ruach. That's what that means. We can't all be teachers. We can't all be prophets. We can't all speak in tongues. So obviously speaking in tongues cannot be a qualifying, the qualifying uh, rule that, that says that we're, that we're delivered or have the Ruach in us. Matter of fact, if you continue to read on through 13 and 14, you'll quickly find out the love is the greatest of all gifts. Is love. So, you know, love trumps all of them. It's the best gift. To be able to love you who and love others 
I mean, uh, the whole entire Torah and prophets hangs on love. You know, the ten love commands and the first and second greatest command are all love commands, teaching us and commanding us to obey and love Yahuwah and to love others. That's all it's about, man. So anyway, uh, <clears throat> I think this is uh, pretty much a wrap on that. Um, if if we don't um, if we don't acknowledge what's written in scriptures as truth, and we begin to teach against the scriptures because of rumors or things that we are taught in our past or possibly because we don't have clarification on what we're reading um, we should be very very cautious about uh, speaking out against the word of truth the word of truth has plenty I mean plenty of writings here passages in it that clarifies to us that, that there's one Ruach and there are many gifts given to the body through the one Ruach. Then who in it do we think we are that we have the right to say that any of those gifts are annulled or are irrelevant to the body? I, just, I don't understand that. Okay? Many people try to cover themselves by saying, Oh, well that was just for them. That was just for that particular group of believers. Okay? During Yahushua's time. That, that's not for us. You know? And the scriptures plainly says that it is for us. For them, their children, for everybody who's far away. And since we know that Yahuwah does not change, then neither does his spiritual gifts. They don't change. Matter of fact, I believe they're going to be heightened in the tribulation years. I believe all the believers are going to, those gifts are going to be heightened to maximum power. And you're going to see those gifts going, uh, being utilized and used and uh, dis on display just like back in these days. I do believe that. I believe the Ruach who empowers us is going to um, show people in the tribulation years, man, you know, but his people, that his people are his people. And he, he's going to empower them to do great miracles and healings, you know, casting out demons and so forth and so on, just like the first century Nazarene did. <coughs> but, uh, you know, the logical understanding is that after we receive the Ruach HaKadosh, and um, especially the, the 12, uh, you know, the, uh, the ones that were the 120 Nazarene who spoke in tongues. And that some of them prophesied, uh, the Ephesians, when they spoke in tongues and prophesied, is that not all of them that were present during those e those events, spoken tongues. So, it kind of with a little bit of common sense. I think we can conclude that some of them received the gift of speaking in tongues. Some interpreted. Some prophesied. 
some extolled, and other and and then there's other examples in Scripture where Yahusha commanded them to receive the Ruach Hakadosh, and uh, they went out and they actually you know, were just healing, casting out demons and everything else because they had the Ruach. Uh, and not all of them were uh, running around speaking in tongues and prophesying and so forth and so on. So what I'm saying is um, I think these different occurrences after receiving the real Kakadesh is enough evidence that speaking in tongues is not a necessity for being delivered or receiving the Ruach. I mean, if we're going to put anything into that, fit anything into that, it would be love. You know, I think love would be strong evidence uh, and possibly even necessary, if you will, to be delivered and to show and to prove that you have the Ruach HaKadosh in you. I mean, Love is it, other than the, the spiritual gifts. When, when, when somebody has a real high condition in them and they portray the spiritual gifts, those are the, those, that is the personality, the characteristic of Yahuwah that, they're, that you're seeing. Love, patience, kindness, gentleness, all those is that's who Yahuwah is. And that's who you're, that's the evidence that he's in them is that you're seeing the fruits of the Spirit being produced from them. So if you're going to put a necessity on something that shows that uh, they have the real high condition, it would be the spiritual gifts to me with emphasis on love. Those false teachers or the uninformed teachers, mostly in Christianity, with different backgrounds, different denominational backgrounds, insist that the cases that we went over here, especially in Acts 2, 10, and 19, prove that all believers who receive the immersion of the Ruach HaKadosh must speak in tongues as evidence of being delivered. However, like I said, if we use common sense to understand and to consider this entire matter, we cannot and they should not use these passages as proof. On the contrary, we can clearly see in 1 Corinthians 12, that not everyone speaks in tongues. We just got done reading that. Some speak in tongues as the evidence for manifestation of the Ruach HaKadosh in them, but others have different manifestations for gifts, spiritual gifts given to them. There is no I'm guessing about this, folks. There should be no more quarreling about this. So let us be clear. According to the word of truth, that speaking in tongues is, <clears throat> speaking in tongues is, but one of many gifts or manifestations of the Ruach HaKadosh has power upon us. So speaking in tongues is not a necessary item or gift. And it is not the initial item or evidence given to us in order to prove that we have the Ruach HaKadosh in us and are going to be delivered. Therefore, we should all, none of us, should oppose speaking in tongues. Neither should we 
uh, we should not insist on it as being necessary for deliverance. So we should not, none of us should oppose it, but we should not insist on it as being necessary for deliverance either. Um, I think it's fairly clear at this point. I, I don't see where there's you know, any um, opposition to that written in Scripture. Yes, people received the gift of speaking in tongues when they were immersed with the Ruach, but I don't think it says that all. I think the and prophecy and extolled, you know, and fire, all proves that they received zeal. They received, uh, they were praising highly, pure, perfect praising. They were speaking in tongues. They were prophesying after they received. I don't think they all received tongues and then all started doing all their gifts. Because it says that not all have that gift. So I hope this clears things up on this. And like I said, we shouldn't be going around forbidden speaking in tongues, acting like it's from the devil or something. That's blasphemy of the Ruach, because the Ruach's the one that gives you the gifts. You know. But neither should we be going around like these uninformed teachers and saying that it's a necessity to be delivered, that you have to speak in tongues to prove that you have the Ruach and you were sealed for the day of redemption. You know, that's not saying that at all. I don't see in there anywhere where it says that. That's a stretch. So, uh, that's about it. I appreciate you all for watching this, and I hope it makes some sense, and that we've gotten some truth out of this lesson. I know I've learned a lot, and I hope you have too. So long, folks. Bonus feature time. <laughs> All right. Romans 8. Romans 8. There is then now no condemnation to those who are in Meshach Yahusha, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Ruach. Got to walk in the Ruach, folks. Spirit and truth. For the Torah of the Ruach of the life in Meshach Yahusha has set me free from the law of sin and death. For the Torah being powerless in that it was weak over the flesh, Yahuwah having his own son in the likeness of flesh of sin and concerning sin condemned sin in the flesh so that the righteousness of the Torah should be completed in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Ruach. So the righteousness of the Torah can only be completed if you have the, because if you have the Ruach HaKodesh and dwell and use what this is saying, okay? The, the uh, Torah being powerless and meaning that the Torah couldn't save you. Okay, it, it, can, it doesn't have the power to save you, okay? Um, <clears throat> through our belief, okay, in our salvation through the Ruach, um, through the salvation plan, we, uh, and we, go, we were able to um, obey the Torah, the commands of Yahusha out of love, and because we've already been delivered. See what I'm saying? Um, it's not something, obeying the Torah does not save us. We know that. You can't be saved by obeying the Torah. We know that. It's, it says here that it's powerless. Okay? Just through belief in Yahusha and through the joint spirit of the Ruach are we able to obey the Torah. Okay? 
for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the matters of the flesh. But those who live according to the Ruach, the matters of the Ruach. For the mind of the flesh is death, but the mind of the Ruach is life and peace. Yeah. Because the mind of the flesh is hatred towards Yahuwah, for it does not subject itself to the Torah of Yahuwah. Neither indeed is it able. So we're not able to subject ourselves to the Torah and obey his commands until we receive the indwelling spirit of Yahushua in us. And those who are in the flesh are unable to please Yahuwah because they're not able to be obedient. You have to be in the mind of the spirit. Okay, you have to have the indwelling spirit of Yahushua in you in order to be obedient. You can't, you can't. You can't be delivered by being obedient, folks, to the Torah. Torah doesn't have that, that power to, to save you. All right? It's just what you do after you're, after the fact that you are have the indwelling spirit of Yahushua and you're sealed for the day of redemption, you're being delivered, do you obey? Because of the indwelling spirit of Yahushua in you, it enables you to obey then, because now you're walking in the mind of the spirit, not the mind of the flesh anymore. If you have his indwelling Ruach. <clears throat> but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. See? If indeed the Ruach of Yahuwah indwells you. And if anyone does not have the Ruach of Mashiach, this one is not his. And if Mashiach is in you, the body is truly dead on account of sin. But the Ruach is life on account of righteousness. And if the Ruach of him who raised Yahushua from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Mashiach from the dead shall also give life to your mortal bodies to the Ruach dwelling in you. See that? So the Ruach is life on account of righteousness. His righteousness in you. His spirit in you is righteous. It allows you to be righteous by obeying his commands, which was you were unable to do before you receive the Ruach. If you think you're without sin and you can obey that Torah without the Ruach in you, good luck. Good luck. In that case, why did Yahushua even bother to come down then? Incarnate yourself. If you could do all that. And if the Ruach of him who raised Yahushua from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Meshach from the dead shall also give life to your mortal body through the Ruach indwelling you. So then, brothers, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you are going to die. But if, you, if, but if by the Ruach you put to death the deeds of the body, you shall live. See? So you have to have the Ruach I can dash in you, man. You can't, you cannot obey that Torah enough to save yourself in the flesh, the mind in the flesh. Got that Baruch HaKadosh in you. This Romans 8 is so powerful, man. It's, I mean, it's, it's just right straight bold in your face telling you that. For as many as are led by the Ruch of Yahuwah, these are the sons of Yahuwah. Say, so you have to have the Ruach in you to be the son of Yahuwah, man right there for you did not receive the ruach of bondage again to fear but you received the ruach of adoption by whom we cry out abba father the ruach himself bears witness with our ruach that we are the children of yahuwah and of children also heirs truly heirs of yahuwah and co-heirs with mashik if indeed we suffer with him in order that we also be exalted together See that? So, you know, I mean, <laughs> for as many as been led by the Ruach, these are the sons of Ruach. For you did not receive the Ruach of bondage to fear, but you received the Ruach of adoption by we cry out, Abba, Father. For the Ruach himself bears witness with our Ruach that we are children of Yahuwah. So his Ruach in us bears witness with our Ruach together that we are the sons of Yahuwah. So you have to have that his Ruach in you, man, before you can be the son of Yahuwah. 
you have to bear witness together, two witnesses. Your spirit and his spirit together bears witness that you are the son of Yahuwah. Ruach is so important, folks. The immersion of the Ruach is so important. Okay, so thank you for watching. And uh, um, remember to stay in love with Yahusha. So long, Nazarene, beloved of Yahuwah. I sing out with praise.